Hello everybody on YouTube, this is Ahaji. This week's tutorial is side chaining and it was requested by many people. So what is side chaining? Side chaining is an action where you have two signals and the first one is an audio signal and the second one is a control signal that changes depending uh, what signal processor you are using and it affects how the first signal sounds like you see in the signal flow chart here uh, but what does it mean in usage for example if you have a compressor and you want to have the kick punch in more on the hit but uh, you have a really loud bass part you can use the side chaining to tame that So let me play you a clip without any processing. As you can hear, the bass is really overpowering the mix, but uh, it's about at the loudness where I want it when there is no kick. So what I will do is that I have this uh, sidechain compressor here. And uh, in Cubase, the sidechain button is here. You could also use the one that comes with Cubase itself. Looks like this. It does the same thing as the sidechain here. Anyway. Uh, by default, it works like a normal compressor. But when you turn on the sidechain, which is this button here, uh, let me turn this off. It doesn't do anything until you fix something to it. So, what you need to do, I have a ascend from the kick channel. It goes to side chains and it's this one. And uh, then I send it at pre fader. So, no matter what I do, it always does the same level, but you can also put it to pre-fader if you want, if you have some cool volume automation or something. Okay, so uh, then I have the ratio here and threshold, which are the more needed elements of this. If the ratio is set uh, one to one, it doesn't do, do anything, if, no matter how low you put the threshold. So I'll put it back to, what was it, 18 something? Okay, and uh, then we load the threshold. Now you can hear the bass popping when the kick is coming in. But uh, that's a bit extreme settings. We are looking for something like maybe 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction. But I also noticed that the kick sound that I'm using Uh, when I set the threshold correctly and uh, put some processing on the bass also I only have the max bass to give it some low end and then I have a limiter to kill all any overshoots that might occur okay let's try <laughs> These uh, audio tracks are going to the music group. I'll put the limiter there so that it prevents the overshoots, as you can hear 
see the master went to 1.4 and it's not doing anything it's like lowering the level so that my voice dialogue is can be heard over the music okay and uh, Then what you can do is do creative side chaining, such as okay, I messed up just a bit. Uh, I forgot to turn on the solo on the microphone channel. Also, anyway, you can do some creative gating. For example, I have here the drum kit without the bass, so it's uh, hi hats and snares. And what you can do. Is that you can sidechain them with the bass using a gate. So here is the uh, bass track without the sidechain gate. And here it is with the sidechain gate. So basically it is pumping to the rhythm of the playing which is kind of cool and when you combine it with the sidechain kick it gives you an extra pump which is kind of cool and this is more of an artistic tool than a audio engineering mixing tool so if you are not the producer you might not necessarily want to do this unless the producer is asking for you to do it So, but uh, when you go to live situations, the most common use of side chaining is gating the drums, for example. I'll use the gate that comes with Cubase. One. And the side chaining that you use on the kick usually is a high pass filter or a band pass filter. So, let's see how this sounds. Uh, this is the sidechain section of the gate on the Cubase gate and here is the listening for the sidechain so we are now listening to the frequency that might be the best sounding This one might be a bit too hard if it would be a real kick. It would be hard to de detect because it could get bleed from a snare or hi-hats or whatever symbols you have. So let's try lower with just high pass. Okay, that, that, that actually might be good on toms because then you wouldn't get the bleed from the kick drum and let's try harder Q the ring for this kick seems to be about there so let's try really fast And without the gate. So it's tightening up the gate just a bit. What I also forgot to mention is that also the stereo mode on many compressors or on hardware or software are side chaining basically because you have two different channels that are doing very different things but they are still getting the same compression depend on the stereo compressor for example that was so confusing what other things are side chaining well side chaining can also be docking and bow coding we have i have also made a 
a tutorial about low coding, you can see it here. And um, it can also be voiceovers. And uh, like many, many, many other things. You can also make a sidechain gate, uh, sorry, sidechain reverb, like in the Phil Collins days. Actually, let me show you that quickly. Let's pick some normal reverb here. Let's take Rubemarks SE. I think that, that might be okay. Mixed to 100%. Let's do a sidechain kick drum. It's like so not the 80s but it's a separate element here so here's the reverb send and here is the sidechain send Anyway, not the best example because it's not a snare drum, but I can actually switch it to snare drum because it's MIDI. Okay, now it's a snare. Okay, this is not about how to make a good sounding uh, gated reverb, but just mainly how to do it. So I hope you learned something here and uh, thank you for watching and make good music. This is a bit off topic, but uh, if you listen, I have the lead sound here. And the starting sound actually was kind of uh, awful. Let's see the spectrum analyzer here. As you can see, it has a low end bump here. And it has like some, I don't know, something, basically the sound ends here and then it has some noise over here. So what I did was that I took a EQ and I have only high pass and low pass filters on it so that it removes this useless 0 to 200 hertz garbage and then this noise over uh, 7k the filters are not brick wall they if you put the filter here it means it doesn't mean that it goes straight down but what it means i'll give you a spin here is the filtered one And let's put that graph to memory and then let's turn off the EQ. As you can see basically they are still at the same point but I'm getting rid of this garbage that I didn't want and rid of this garbage that I didn't want because it's just taking away my headroom.